the name of our devotion tonight is called There's No Comparison. No comparison. No comparison. Have you ever said that? There is just no comparison. Have you ever eaten a food or or had ice cream? Like maybe you had, uh, what is the name of that place we used to go? Brahms. If you've had like Brahms ice cream or you've That's had. That's in Texas. Or, or, or you've had uh, Schwann's ice cream and there's a special ice cream. It's not just the flavor, but it's the brand. And you make the statements that, oh, there's there's no comparison. Blue Bunny. Oh, Blue Bunny. Blue Bunny, Blue Bonnet. No, that's margarine. But anyway, you know what I'm talking yes. about. No comparison. And even when it comes to fruit, there are some places that you like to buy your fruit because it's always fresher and it tastes better than what you buy in other places. And, and there's no comparison. Well, and sometimes because I know you love to grocery shop. Right. And so, but there's some grocery stores that you just say, man, that was, I really enjoyed that because they had everything displayed right, like fresh. And right. it was like a place you'd want to just hang out for a little bit in grocery yeah. shop and good deals. Yeah. Well, so we, there's, there's no comparison to, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but there's no comparison to the Kroger in Carbondale and, oh, and Aldi. That. You understand what I'm talking about? You go into Aldi and and Aldi. I mean, the Kroger and Carbondale. They they've got it on display. It's fresh cut meat. It looks very nice. And you know. Uh, but Aldi's is cheaper. We like Aldi. Exactly. We like so, Aldi too. Yeah, we get our tuna at Aldi, oh, but yeah. I get our fruit at Kroger. <laughs> so anyway, there is something in us that likes to compare. It's it is in us. And so comparing can be a good thing when it comes to groceries value. or shopping. I mean, or like, clothing. yeah, value, clothing. Cars. That's right. Um, so the quality of the product, sometimes if you get something real, it's like, man, that's cheap, but is it cheap made? So, it, you know, you're looking at the comparison of the well, two. Well, and the question becomes, are you, go ahead, are you comparing apples to apples or yeah. are you comparing apples to oranges? So yeah, there's that, a difference. Yeah, the saying is that if we're if you're comparing apples to oranges, you can't do that because that's not an even comparison. Yeah. But if you're comparing apples to apples, so like if I'm talking about uh, a brand name oh. purse and I'm comparing it to a knockoff purse, that's apples to oranges, man. There's no comparison to but that. But if you're talking about apples, you know the apple that is my favorite. And to me, there's no comparison. Is the Honey Crisp? Oh yes. Put your thumbs up if you like Honey Crisp. Yes. Are you gonna eat that now? I'm going to peel it so I can show them that there's no comparison. Oh no, it's, there's just no comparison. Now see, good. if you, if we had smell TV, you could smell right now this orange. Yeah, it's great. Good. It, it, it's got a great smell to it. Bite that apple and find out. You know, I'm gonna get lipstick you know, all sometimes, over. sometimes what happens is we buy something. And we think it's going to be good, and it looks good on the outside. But when you take a bite of it, it's like, this, this just ain't making it. This isn't honey crisp, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> it's good, and it's good for you. But anyway, back to our lesson. Oh, oh, it almost rolled off the table. And so that was <laughs> apples to oranges. So lately, Rick has been because he has an art. His gym at home has been closed, and so he. He had to join one close to us. This is a lot better than that. Yeah, I know it is. But um, anyway, so he he may like something better at one and something at the other, but he's comparing the two. And so anyway, I was also thinking, do you know that even dogs compare themselves with one another? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, like our, our kids have uh, dogs, and one's a large, like a standard poodle. The other's a little small toy poodle. So they were telling me that um, Landon, our grandson, handed Izzy, well, she's the, the small poodle, handed her some broccoli because she wanted it. It was cooked and it had some garlic on it. And she took it, she was eating the top off. Well, then Susie, who is the big uh, poodle, tries to take it away from her. And that's sometimes what somebody else has looks better to us. And we, so we compare the two, yeah. right? Well, what you got's better than what I got, so I want what you got. Yeah, exactly. So what happened was Susie, got the broccoli away from her and was, you know, <clears throat> I guess moving around and she dropped it. And when she dropped it, Izzy grabbed it real quick and she dropped it in her 
food bowl and buried her head into her food bowl <laughs> so Susie couldn't get it. So there's, if you've ever, if you have animals and, or more than one, you've probably seen that where they want each other's bone. It's like a cow. They'll hide it it's from like each other. It's like a cow that's eating grass, that's got yes. his head stuck through a fence, eating grass on the other side of the fence because why? Let me hear it. The, the grass, grass is always greener on, on the, the other, other side. side of the fence. That's true. Um, so I'll be right back. Where you I need to wash this orange off my hand. I promise I'm coming right no. back. Go, go, give me a stretch. Well, um, so I was thinking now while he's gone, uh, I, I can remember just comparing myself to, to Rick when it comes to speaking or, you know, like when he would want me to speak and, and I would just, and if he was there in the crowd even, I would compare myself and think, you know, have you, you know what I'm talking about? Like, Which you should not, never do that. You weren't supposed to hear that. <laughs> I heard it. But, you know, to where that's the gift that God has given him and but I did the same thing when I was a young minister there was another minister that had been preaching for some time and he he was young too he was probably I don't know I'm going to say probably 10 years older than I was I was probably 18 and he was around 28 but I found myself comparing and I never felt like I was good enough but what's the scripture say about that about what about comparing to one another oh I thought you wanted to wait to read that later that we'll go ahead. Yeah, you can read that part. Well, here we'll we'll get to it in a minute. But you know what it says: He that compareth himself to, to another, another is, not, is wise. not wise. So then you're going to read the full one later right. if you wanted to use it. But um, I was just thinking, compare. Everybody say compare. Compare. Compare means to set in a row. Oh shoot! I wish I would have got that uh, tape measure in that drawer. That's okay. Oh man. Well, you can get an idea. We measure. Sure. I needed that tape measure. <laughs> they, 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 right. can, they can so compare them. means to set in a row to estimate and to value to examine in order to note similarities and differences so that's what we do sometimes with one another right. I remember when I was probably oh 10 years old maybe 12 I guess it don't matter but there was a girl in school that she I mean she came to school with these darling shoes they were called yo-yos you remember the yo-yos no yeah <laughs> Well, that would date you probably, but they were just so cute, and they had the straps across the front. She was like the smartest girl in school, and so I remember, man, I would like to have a pair of those shoes. I just like those shoes so much, so the comparison turned to envy. Right. And so I remember telling my mom, because I found out where she got them, and I wouldn't do that today because I like the uniqueness. I like to be different from everybody else, you know what I'm saying? But then I remember my parents couldn't afford those shoes like that I mean they were leather and they had you know they were just really nice but then uh, they ended up buying me a pair of shoes like that and I felt bad about it later but that was because I was comparing and I wanted you something wanted she something. had well anyway, we do it I we just do thought it. about that that wasn't we good do it with people nice of me. right we do if somebody's taller than us and I see princess Hamilton hey, is princess watching so hey Trinidad. princess good to and see so you. her husband Tony is real tall and when we would take those trips we'd have George Lee with us and oh, those yeah. of you that know Pastor George Lee he's a lot smaller and he would stand up next to Tony and Pastor Tony. you know Pastor Tony and and you know try and climb up and he'd always say when we get to heaven Tony I'm going to be taller than you well, or Pastor Tony's like six nine yeah and uh, George Lee's about five eight four. probably or five eight yeah, anyway, he's not. It, it doesn't, that I mean, tall. you can, you but can just the, kind it's of. It's the comparison. Yeah, you we compare what I'm ourselves. About? We compare our noses, we compare our ear. we compare everything. Yeah. And we have to remember that God made us unique. That's right. And so he wants us to celebrate our uniqueness. You know, um, how many have ever tried to be like somebody else? I mean, in as much as you talk like them, you acted like them. I can remember, you know, talking about earlier on in ministry as well this particular um, church, I, they were, you know, of course had ministers in it, but they they would act like, I mean, you could just see that they weren't coming into their own identity. They were... They were trying to mimic someone. And so what happens, now there are people that make a living doing that. Oh, that's right. You, you know, I don't know. Go to remember. Branson, you'll see. Rich, yeah. I didn't yeah, Rich Little. That. But Rich Little used to mimic everyone. You go to Branson and there are people that are mimicking stars from the past. But here's the reality. That's not who they are. And if you're not careful, you end up living a life that is not your own. 
You know, we, we see it happen with kids where parents are trying to live their life through their children. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and so they, they compare the kids to one another. Yes. And that becomes detrimental to the children. Right, especially if you've heard, if you could only be like your brother. Maybe the brother was academically really smart. Or athletic. Or athletic, yeah. yeah. If you could be like him, then they're, I mean, that's the worst thing that we can say to our kids, right? Because they're, right. they don't feel, they, they never come into their identity or they live in the shadow of one of their siblings so, because their, their parents maybe lifted one up more than the other. And, and if someone's not athletic or they're not as intelligent as someone else, that doesn't mean that they're not valuable. That that's they, right. They are, God fearfully, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And so celebrate your children for the individual that they are. Right. Well, Psalms 139 and 1 through verses 1 through 3, this scripture always touches my heart. And David says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my downsetting and my uprising. You understand my thoughts afar off. You can pass my path and my lying down, and you are you are acquainted with all my ways. So when it says you search me, you know what that search there means, once again, to examine intimately. But he doesn't compare you with someone else. Right. When he looks at you, it's not like, I wish you could be like this no. person. Do he doesn't know, compare do you. Do you know why? It's because he crafted you. Yes. You're unique. You know, Thomas Kincaid painted... I don't know how many paintings, you know, and I, we've got uh, a few at our house, but we each one of his paintings are unique for what they are. And you don't compare the Christmas painting to the garden painting because they are each representing something different. And we are all individuals that God made in his image and in his likeness, and he's, he's handcrafted that. Think about that, because things that are handmade are always better than what's mass-produced, right, right? Right, And think about this, that we are handcrafted by there's God. There's only one thing, there's only one thing you're better at more than anybody else, and that's being you. No one can beat you being you. Right. And so there's something that God has, I mean, there's no one that can fulfill the purpose in your life than you. I mean, better than you because it's designed just for you. And right. that's why it's, it's when he says um, in Second Corinthians uh, 10, I believe it's 10 and 12, when he says he that compares himself and right. measures himself right. to one another is not wise. What he's saying is, man, you're going to get yourself, it's, it's not wisdom. It, it, it can become, you know, detriment to you and keep you from walking in uh, your giftings. Right. And what happens is you never, it, it, when you do that, you never discover who you are. You, you're always living in someone else's shadow or trying to be somebody else. And so I, I, I've watched this happen in ministry where, you know, people were trying to mimic, you know, the, the hottest TV preacher, you know, yeah, and then, that's right. so they, they patterned themselves after that. And then guess what? Then that guy, you know, isn't hot anymore, or you know, or somebody and so else, somebody takes else the stage. comes along that takes the limelight, and now, yeah. oh, now I got to fashion myself after someone else. That's not what God wants for us. God wants us to be us. That's right. He wants us to go to Him and say, "God, help me be the best me right. I can be." You made me for a purpose and for a plan. We talked earlier about you know, even churches can do this. We can do this as churches. Yeah that we begin to compare ourselves to one another. Like what we don't have or that they have or feel like we got to get something because yeah. they've got it or like we, you know, we've got to be the, the yeah, latest, like most got, relevant, whatever. You know, I've got friends in Texas that have got church, of, you know, over 10,000 people. You know, they have multiple services, multiple campuses. Well, then if I start trying to compare to that, that what I'm doing is I am diminishing the value of our church. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? That, uh, that we may not have 10,000, but the 300 or the 200 or the 100 that you have, or the 50 or the 25 That's that right. you have, are valuable. That's right. That, that God cares for them, and God has called you to them. And so you minister in that field where God's called you and be the best you you can be there. Don't try and be somebody else there. 
you know, let God speak to your heart. Don't start right. chasing after and preaching other people's oh, messages, yes, you know. Yes. I've seen that happen over and over. And I've had people come and say, you know what, man, I, I heard that they got that from so-and-so, you know, the same illustrations, and, and, and the same it's okay. graphics. It's okay to, to glean, yeah. but it's like let God let God de develop. You may you may gain some from, something from this one and something from that one, but let him... Let him uh, a just message, flow through you. Exactly. And a message may speak to your heart. Yes. But then let it become your message. Don't, you know, don't verbatim, you know, and, and word for word and line for line trying to, you know, do what someone else is doing. Otherwise, you lose who you are. That's right. Let God speak to you. As an individual. And he'll give you things that maybe nobody else has heard. Because it's unique. It's because I mean, once again, in the four, 139 Psalms 139 and 14 says, "I will praise you. I will praise the Lord for I am. We are fearfully. I am fearfully and wonderfully made." And so, when you understand that there there is no um, fingerprint that's the same, you know, I want to tell you something. Made me think about. I don't know if this is a rabbit trail or not. That's from that apple. I know. Oh, sorry, I got it. You know, when you eat an apple and you have lipstick on, it gets right there. <laughs> but um, James, are, you, you hear us talk about James a lot, but he's been through a whole lot. And he was uh, working on a garage door. And you don't know where I'm going with this, do you? No, if you're talking about the doggy door. We've already I'm not, done. No, I'm okay. not. Okay. No, this is something else. But anyway, he was on a ladder and he lost his balance and his finger got caught into the mechanism and he lost his finger from here, it was this finger, so he lost it from here up. From the first joint. The first joint up, and all that was exposed was his bone. All, all the you could see was, was a there. white bone. And do you know what? They wrapped it. It was like a new technique that they, they were discovering. They wrapped it, and his finger grew back fingernail and all fingernail and all we watched it happen he would take the bandage off and it would he it was it would form like bubbles like pink bubbles all over it and then you start seeing flesh grow on it but i want to tell you something so if you're just about to have dinner <laughs> <laughs> bon appetit <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you know what even his his nail print even his his the um fingerprint you mean? i mean fingerprint <laughs> 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 i knew that didn't sound right but anyway <laughs> His fingerprint grew back, that, but it's his own. I mean, you you don't have the same fingerprints. It's just I just amazed by that. And then what we do oftentimes is compare ourselves. So I mean, when we finally get it and we we choose to walk in our uniqueness and we we celebrate what God has done in us individually, you know, it's to me it's it's freedom. It's freedom right, to be you. You're a masterpiece. So um, I we. I wanted you, you're going to read that whole, well, oh, we, no, okay. we, we talked about, it, when we were talking about in ministry, about not trying to be like someone else, the, you know, here's what you have to remember is that Noah, or that Abraham starts to talk to God. Now, this is about no comparison, right? So Abraham has a relationship with God. And as Abraham starts to talk to God when he finds out that Sodom and Gomorrah are going to be destroyed, he, he starts out with 50 and he said, God, he said, what if there's 50 righteous people living there? Are you you're going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? That's not like you. And God tells him, he said, I won't do it for the 50. And Abraham keeps talking to God in this conversation back and forth with God till he comes down to, well, God, what if there's 10 righteous? Mm. And God said, I won't destroy the city for the 10 righteous. Now, I want you to hear the heart of God. God is saying, if I could find 10 righteous people in that city, I would spare the entire city for the 10. But God couldn't find the 10 righteous. But it's the heart of God that there was no comparison to that. How You know, can't think about that, that a man is, is, is talking with God and, and he's able to get God to say, okay, I, 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 when I'm, there's no comparison with righteous and wicked. So I'll spare the right, I'll spare the city for the righteous sake. I'm not going to compare them to the wicked. And then you go to Noah and Noah is spared from the whole world. The whole world is going to be destroyed. 
but there's one man, not his family. Do you understand? The Bible didn't say that Noah's family found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible said that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And so what Noah did was Noah could have fallen into the trap of comparing himself to another. He could have said, well, all everyone else is doing it, so why should yeah, I be any different? Everybody... Right. But Noah was said, no, my focus is not, yes, this is on, not on everybody about else. everybody else. This is about me and God. This isn't about my relationship with them. This is about my relationship with him. Yes. And I want my relationship with him to be right. God, help us when we start allowing people around us to adversely affect our relationship with God. Well, they're putting pressure on me, and they're saying that, you know, that, that I'm not tolerant, and I'm not this, and I'm not that. Do you understand? They didn't save you. That's they right. didn't go to Calvary for That's you. Right. Jesus did that. Yes. Let that be a personal relationship. Otherwise, what happens is we start falling into yes, just a big blob of what everybody else wants us to be instead of being unique in God's eyes. You know, I remember what a minister said uh, when we were at a conference, it's been years ago, the, the one that had a church of 10,000 people. Right. And he said, if, but if you live in a city that's, uh, you may have what? He said, if you, I, he said, me, I can't he, remember he said if you live in a city that's got 5,000 people and you're running 500, he said, you're doing a lot better than I am. He said, because you're running 10% of your city. Or take he said, it down if, you, less if, than you, that. if you're running 5%, if you're running 250, you're doing a lot better than I am because, you know, the the population the of Dallas and that surrounding area was, you know, a, a few million people. So when you're talking about, you know, 5% of 3 million or 2 million, you're talking about. You know, well, just say a million, 5% of a million people is going to be. Or if you're running 50, it doesn't, and what I'm saying, it doesn't matter. Right. Because that's, that's who God's called people. you to. Exactly. And, and so just, it can be a Macedonian call. So we can't get hung up on numbers or feel like, or comparing ourselves with, with, you know, we're just using that, for example, with a church. But no matter what it is, he doesn't want us to compare. And, you know, he's, it, it's like walk in what God has called you and who the people he's led or that he has called you to. Right. Um, but anyway, so. So let me go to Corinthians because Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter, this is probably the best place in Scripture to be able to uh, relate to there's no comparison. Because what happens is Paul, you know, birthed the Corinthian church. He poured himself into it. He was the one that first started. And then others came along and they started bad-mouthing Paul, and they started putting him down and, and comparing themselves to him. And so this is Paul's answer to all of his critics, and this is in the uh, NLT, but I, I, I want you to catch this. It's powerful to me. This starts with the 10th chapter in verse 9. I'm not trying to frighten you by my letters, for some say Paul's letters are demanding and forceful, but in person he is weak and his speeches are worthless. Those people should realize that our actions when we arrive in person will be as forceful as what we say in our letters. Oh, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are, but they are only comparing themselves with each other using themselves as a standard of measurement. How ignorant. When people commend themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. That's right. So I want you to get this today. You may have fallen into the trap of allowing your worth to be measured by how much somebody else is commending you. Oh, yeah. What their praise for you is, what their words about you are yes and Paul's laying it all out here he's saying they commend themselves among themselves he said that's a, an ignorant way to measure he said it doesn't matter much when we commend ourselves among ourselves but what matters is when the Lord commends us I want you to know this tonight that God loves you 
that he cares about you yes. that he 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 thinks you're wonderful he's got great things in store for your life and no matter where you are right now you may be confused and and feel like you've been used abused and excused God's mm. hand is still reaching that's to right. you that's right that's right and he wants you to know he's got a purpose and a plan for your life and he loves you and believe me friend there's no one like you Isaiah 40 and 18 says to whom then will you liken God or what likeness will you compare unto him there's no there's none to compare to him. No one like our God and no one like you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace, and your love. We just ask tonight that you extend your hand and touch those that are watching and let them know how special they are, God. Let them know how unique they are and that you have a plan just for their yes, life, yes. specifically designed for them. We praise you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you, you all. We love you all. Look forward to seeing you in the in parking the lot in the morning. This is our last parking lot service. Uh, so make sure you're here. We're going to have a time. We're just going to praise God and honk our horns and worship the Lord. All right? That's right. We look forward to seeing you. We'll have some more information for you in the morning. Okay, God bye -bye. bless. Bye-bye.